Well, it's officially seven o'clock. So today is Monday, January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year to everybody. And we will call this meeting of the Sault Ste. Marie City Commission to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Gary. Here. Commissioner Baker. Commissioner Bospis Rath. Here. Commissioner Collins. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Talentino. Here. Commissioner Twarty. Here. Commissioner Baker did call, reach out to uh, City Manager Chapman and say she wasn't able to attend tonight. So we need a motion to uh, excuse her. I'll make that motion. Support. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I got to vote too, I guess. All right. So Commissioner Miller is poised and ready for uh, year two of his Pledge of Allegiance details. So if we could all stand and uh, put our computers on mute and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Good job as always. Number four, Mayor comments. I really don't have any comments, just Happy New Year. I know we're all very excited to be in 2021. And uh, it's already starting out much better than 2020. If you all remember, we were just getting off the tail of a pretty nasty ice storm where people were out of power. Some people were still out of power at this date. So 2021 is, is coming in uh, pretty softly with 32 degrees right now and not a lot of snow on the ground. So happy new year to everybody. And uh, we look forward to a, a happy and productive year of recovery. So uh, B, proclamations and recognitions. Don't see any on there. So we'll move to C, public comment. Is there anybody that is online that would make any like to make any comments uh, on any of the agenda items this evening? If you could give us your name and uh, address. So looks like... It's Tony Haller here. Is this the time, uh, Mr. Tordy, to talk about uh, the Sioux Locks uh, Park? Yes. We'll put your name down and uh, we will call on you, Tony, uh, when that item comes up. Thank you. All right. So Tony Haller, resident of Prospect in Sioux St. Marie. Hey. Linda Hoth? Yes, me too, please. All right. Linda Hoth. Uh, anybody else that would like to speak on any agenda items? And they were going to speak about uh, agenda item. Yeah, what number is it? G5. Correct. Yep, G5. Thank you very much. Anybody else that would like to speak to any agenda item? All right, moving on uh, to item D, which is the consent agenda. Deputy City Manager Robin Troyer. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mayor. Happy New Year. Um, under the consent agenda one, approval of the City Commission meeting minutes of December 21st, 2020. Item two, acceptance of the Community Services Board meeting minutes of October 27th, 2020. Item three, acceptance of the Downtown Development Authority meeting minutes of July 8th, August 12th, August 20th, September 9th, October 14th, and November 11th, 2020. Item four, acceptance of the Historic Structures Management Committee meeting minutes of February 26th, mm -hmm. 2020. Item five is acceptance of the Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission meeting minutes of October 22nd, 2020. And item six is approval of the consent agenda items as presented. Thank you very much. Would any commissioner like any of the items further explained or removed for individual consideration? Tony Haller, you look kind of godlike with that light behind you. Commissioner Twardy, did you want to make a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda. Support. <laughs> been moved and supported. Are there any questions or comments before we take a roll call vote? Uh, roll call vote, please. 
Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Raff? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Thank you very much. Motion passed unanimously. Item E, special orders of business. Uh, there's none this evening, nor is there any under F communications. So we were moving right along to G, business items. City Manager Chapman, unless I skipped something like I did last meeting, but a little harder to track online, eh, when you're moving up and down. <laughs> City Manager. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Up first for commission consideration is a request to authorize city manager to execute the three collective bargaining agreements that were wrapped up recently. Uh, as you're all aware, the city is represented by seven bargaining units. Three of them were expired in 2020. Um, after a few months of negotiating back and forward, we did manage to find a common ground. Uh, those three contracts are presented to the commission for approval. Uh, some of the highlights of the contracts are four-year contracts. There's some language cleanup throughout each of the individual contracts pertaining to the particular bargaining unit, as well as two, excuse me, two percent wage increases uh, to the bargaining members for year one, two, three, and four. We would look for a motion and approval to authorize the manager to execute the collective bargaining agreements as the recommended action or motion is presented. Thank you, city manager. And uh, we reversed order last meeting, so we're gonna go back to forward order today. So uh, Commissioner Bospis Rath, any questions or comments on these three contracts? I'm all set, thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, I have two questions. Um, the first question is on the city and firefighters union contract in section 8.1. It says that the firefighters pension will be calculated on the last top three of their last five years. Um, am I reading that correctly that it's going to be based on their base pay and that overtime and pager compensation is not going to be included in calculating their pension? Um, if that's how it reads, that wasn't a particular item that we negotiated, so that's probably how it has been. Well, how it's been in the past is that they've been able to increase their wages or their compensation by taking pager or overtime, and then their pension pretty much can equal what their salary is right now based on that. What was this section again, Mr. Collins? Section 8.1. 8.1? Yep, 8.1. As I recall, there was uh, some stipulation about the final average uh, compensation and there were some limitations, but it, he'll have to find those. Well, I know that most municipalities after 2008 were having issues with their pension funds because they were allowing their employees to basically do what I just explained, but then they set it up to where they couldn't take overtime or pagers in order to increase their pension, because how can you plan for that? If you're planning on giving an employee two-thirds of their salary for retirement, but, you know, Instead of making fifty-three thousand dollars this year, they make you know a hundred thousand. Their pension could actually end up giving them more money annually than they were making on a base wage. If you don't know the answer, Brian, that's fine. It's just something that I'm interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I'm just comparing it. Um, I'm just comparing it to the current one that we have in there. I mean, it, it shouldn't have changed. And maybe there's a conflicting provision in here somewhere. I'm not 100% aware of, but the way it is, the way it's presented is the way that it was presented in the previous contract. So I'll have to, you know, I'll follow up and just double check on that. 
Well, I don't know how the rest. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but I definitely think that's something that we need to address. I don't think that somebody's pension should be 100% of what their salary was, um, just because they took a whole bunch of overtime their last three years. I can tell you as the liaison. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not my floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching for my thing, but go ahead if you have a, any input on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, sorry, uh, as a representative to the Police and Fire Pension Board, these are items that they talk about on that board all the time, and that board does discuss. So I wish that um, Department Head Christy Collins was here because she could probably refer exactly to that item number, but... I don't see her in the audience anywhere. No, unfortunately, I gave her the night off. No, that's <laughs> all right. So the other question I have then is, um, what's the actual fiscal impact of these adjustments? You've got in here that they'll be adjusted, but what is the fiscal impact? Yeah, so the, for this particular year, I'm just gonna pull up quick. Where'd it go? So the fiscal impact for just this one year, 2% uh, for the half a year is going to be about 1%. So if I throw it in here, let me pull up the report. We are looking at roughly... Increase. So you're just looking at the increases to the salaries and wages, but is there anything else in there as far as any any other fiscal impacts like the health insurance or any of those things? Nope, all that stuff stays the same. So the only thing that's really right. major that's changing would be the um, the base Wage wages. Increase. Yeah, okay. it looks like it's about sixty grand. Okay, that would be split up between all the different funds. Okay, I'm good with that. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Miller, any questions or comments? I'm wondering if it may behoove us to uh, table this now if we don't have the uh, if we don't have the answer to Commissioner Collins's first question. I, I would like to know that. Uh, city manager, I don't think that's a uh, a component of the negotiated changes to the contract, so um, that's certainly no, not it's, it's probably just a clarity issue that we can get from Chris and tomorrow and follow up with you guys. I don't think it's a, again, nothing could change contractually with that. There could be some other outside factor to it, but I don't think it necessarily pertains to the contract itself. Any other questions, Commissioner Miller? No, oh, thank you, Your Honor. All right, Commissioner Talentino? I'm all set on this, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Twardy. I just wanted to say thank you for the four-year contract. Uh, I think that as we can continue to negotiate longer contracts, maybe be, it'll give you us a little bit of a breather between negotiations. So good job on that, Brian. Other than that, I'm good with everything. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Had good questions, a good comments, and I agree. It's it's nice to uh, go into one-year longer contracts, and it's nice to have these. Uh, done on a timely basis. I remember a time when we were doing contracts that were two and three years delinquent. So this is uh, uh, good to uh, to get these going forward and, and really appreciate the uh, cooperation of the unions and the administration. So great job. Uh, Commissioner Bospis Rath, would you like to make the motion? Absolutely. Motion to authorize a city manager to execute the collective bargaining agreements between the City of Sault Ste. Marie and United Steelworkers Local 13635-01, 13635-03, and 13635-00. Support. Thank you. It's been moved and supported. Any questions or comments before we have a roll call vote? A roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bass. Rath? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. 
Mayor Gary. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, G, business items number two, city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My screen just froze here. Uh, up next for commission consideration is a wage adjustment for the non-union employees. Uh, this is typically followed once the union contracts are approved. It typically keeps par with the union contracts as to not create an uh, inequity issue throughout the organization. Uh, we certainly don't want to create a class of employees that don't feel any um, love, so to say. So we are requesting a 2% wage increase for the non-union employees as the motion recommends. Uh, fiscal impact for that one would be roughly about 16, uh, excuse me, $17,000. So we would look for a motion to increase the wages as presented. Thank you, city manager. Uh, Commissioner Collins, any questions or comments on this item? I uh, guess just a question, just, just a question, because the fiscal impact says that the wage increase is approximately 26000 annually, and it'll be addressed during the second quarter budget review. So you're probably, probably looking, when you say, when you say 16000 you're looking at a half a year, right? Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Miller, any questions or comments? No, thank you, Your Honor. Commissioner Talentino, questions or comments? Nope, I'm all set, Your Honor, thank you. Commissioner Twardy? All set, thank you. And Commissioner Bospis Rath? I'm all set, thank you. All right. Commissioner Collins, would you like to make this motion? Sure. Motion to approve a 2% wage increase for non-union employees retroactive December 27, 2020 as detailed within the included wage tables and as presented. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions or comments? Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Baspis Rath? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Under G, business items number three, City Manager Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Up next in consideration is a request to replace the water treatment plant media and install baffles, as well as a waiver of the competitive, competitive bid process. So. Um, through the water treatment plant process, there are some key processes that need some upgrading. Um, within the agenda item, there's quite a long analysis in there that kind of shows you what the need is and what the plan is moving forward. There are currently funds budgeted in the capital funds, um, so there's going to be a little bit of a, a pivot there in changing what we're going to spend the money on. Um, but we have three requests for three separate motions, a motion to suspend the competitive bid process, motion to purchase media for filter number one in the amount of 14536 and a motion to purchase multi-wash baffles for filter number four for the amount of 60476 uh, With us tonight is the Water Dream Plan Supervisor Kirk Tooze. So if you have any questions on these items, please feel free to ask. Thank you, City Manager. Um... Commissioner Miller, do you have any questions or comments on this item? I have a question for Kurt, please, if I may. Sure, sure. Anytime I see where we're suspending the competitive bid process, I have to ask a question. This is the, this company is the only company we can get this equipment from? That is correct. And it's a fairly common thing within water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants. Um, as you imagine, they're very sophisticated operations, and as such, it's not an easy business just to hop into. So it is a very common practice for water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants to seek out a suspension of the bid process, just for the lack of competition in those businesses. And I'd recommend you. you uh, I'd recommend you watch that YouTube video that's in the link. It's the uh, best five-minute nap I've had in a long time. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Talentino, any questions or comments? No, I'm all set on this issue. Right. Thank you. Commissioner Twardy. 
Just a comment. I'm just yeah. really pleased to see that these items are coming uh, in front of us every meeting and that there's no lag in the attention that's being brought to our water treatment plant. Uh, it's really important that the constituents uh, remain feeling safe, that their drinking water is, is clean and that we're on top of things. And I just really like the way that you're moving forward uh, with um, fixing this, remedying it. And then I see that we have a, a timeline prepared for um, upgrades and things. So just thanks to Kirk and uh, thank you to the city manager. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Bospus Rath, any questions or comments? I'm all set. Thank you. Looks good. All right, Commissioner Collins. I'm all set. Thanks. All right. Uh, and as uh, Commissioner Twardy said, I think it's a uh, it's nice to see a, a five four phase plan that's uh, laid out, and we have some anticipated uh, expenses. So. Uh, we know where you're going, so thank you very much for uh, all that work. And uh, Commissioner Miller, would you like to take this as three separate motions? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Move to suspend the competitive bid process for West Tech Engineering as they are the sole source for filtration media and supplies related to the water plant's filters. Support. Support. The movement is supported. Uh, any questions or comments? And we need a unanimous vote on this one. So roll call, please. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Commissioner Miller, number two. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to purchase media for filter number one for the amount of $14,536. Support. support. Been moved and supported. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Thank you, motion also passed unanimously. Number three, Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to purchase multi-wash baffles for filter number four for the amount of $60,476. Support. Been moved and supported, any questions or comments? A roll call vote, please. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on rapidly under G, business items number four. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Up next for committee consideration is a house cleaning item from the last meeting. Uh, as we discussed, there wasn't really a lot of clarity regarding the Kemp Marinas in terms of who establishes them and what our role is in that. Uh, so tonight we do have a formal action that will kind of uh, make it more of a standard practice for, for the commission to establish the marina fees. Um, as discussed in the last one, the Waterways Commission is the governing body that establishes a rate structure. Within that rate structure, the commission has the ability to set seasonal as well as transient rates. Um, we do have the ability to move these, but they, is, they do usually happen at the end of the season in preparation for the following season. So there's not a lot of movement we can make tonight, but by passing the adopted uh, action item, this will be incorporated into our annual fee structure and brought to the commission for consideration on an annual basis. So we would look for a motion to establish seasonal rates at rate nine the transient rate at E. Don't ask me why one's a number and one's a letter. That's just what they do. Uh, thank you, city manager. We'll uh, start out with Commissioner Collins, I think, because he had uh, asked for this information the last time. So, Yeah, first, uh, thank you, Brian, for bringing this to us. I, I appreciate you getting the rates um, so we can take a look at them. And then uh, based on what you're saying is, is that at the end of the season, which typically is right around um, 
September, October, we'll be able to set the rates for the following year? Correct. Okay. So we can look at possibly increasing the rates for next year then? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for this, by the way. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, Commissioner Miller, any questions or comments? I have a question for Commissioner Collins, actually, All if right. I may. Sure. During the discussion two weeks ago, you seemed very knowledgeable about this, a lot more knowledgeable than I was about it, but I followed what you said. Does this clear things up for you? Is this good for you? Yeah, the, um, the, the, the thing that was confusing to me was is the difference between the rate structure for the seasonal fees and then the um, transient fees. So the seasonal rates are set by the numbers and then the transients are set by the uh, letter. And then um, I just wanted to see where we were at comparable to like Hessel and Detour and we're right in line with them. You know, we can't have, our marine is not gonna be comparable to rates at like Mackinac Island, right? Right. So I'm good with this. And it clarified what I was looking for. Well, I, I just wanted to thank, uh... I just want to thank Mr. Chapman for this information and, uh, and, and uh, Commissioner Collins, thank you for your knowledge on this. Thanks, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Talentino, any questions or comments? Oh, I'm all set on this, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Torty? I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Bospis Rath? I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Collins, would you like to make the motion? Your motion to establish a seasonal rate rates at rate nine for the, should I basically say that rate nine is for the seasonal slips and the transient rate at E? Sure. Yes. yes. Gotcha. S support. Been moved and supported. Any questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Baspas rath Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Mel? Yes. Commissioner Tino? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to G business items uh, number five, which is discussion of the Army Corps of Engineers temporary office locations. City manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Up next for commission discussion. Uh, as a request to have some input on the temporary office locations for the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, the article I sent you last week that I copied into this agenda item kind of summarizes the, the issue at hand. Um, what we would look for the commission to do tonight is just to provide some general, general guidance. Um, what I'll do is take that guidance and draft a letter and send out to the commission for one last time review and then submit it to the Army Corps of Engineer for uh, their consideration prior to their, I believe it's January 13th, public end of their public comment period. So um, I know there's a couple of commissioners that kind of expressed some uh, opinions to me. So we just look for the commission to have a group discussion tonight and I'll kind of summarize it and we'll move from there. All right, thank you very much. Before we get into that, I think uh, we have uh, two members of the public that would like to speak uh, to us on this topic. So I think first one was uh, Tony Haller. Mr. Haller, you're... Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, thanks, City Commission. I'm uh, here not only representing the Chamber of Commerce, but I'm also representing the Sioux Lux, uh, Visitor Center. I've been going on that board for six plus years now, and I realize how important uh, our Sulox Park is for tourism and for uh, uh, the general good of uh, the city of Sault Ste. Marie. So I'm, I'm urging, uh, and I'm, I thank uh, uh, City Manager Chapman for this, but I'm urging that uh, uh, we do draft that letter and have the support of the City Commission and the Mayor to uh, try to preserve the Sulox Park as best we can aesthetically, physically, um, and uh, maybe even have uh, uh, some alternative uh, areas that uh, work can be done. I know they're looking for offices in that park. Uh, they, they used the center last year. I know they vacated it uh, for this coming year, but um, if, if we have uh, them doing things inside the park, which will be open to the public, 
I just think it takes away from our our beautiful park, our tourism, our business support to our community. And I'm looking to uh, have our commission uh, do something sooner than later. And, and even if we can provide some alternative ideas, I did visit with um, a couple of people from the Sioux tribe and they have some offices outside the park. That could be some alternative ideas for them, but uh, that's my here. We're here today to, to lend the support uh, to you guys. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate your input. Uh, City Manager, when is the uh, drop dead date on the uh, comments? Uh, I don't know the time, but it's the 13th, January 13th. So probably oh, about 13th. that. Okay. All right. Yeah. End of business on the 13th. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Linda Hoth. We don't know exactly who you are, but uh, <laughs> I know you have some input. Thanks, sir. Yeah, and I have, you know, I was reading through it and the alternative, and it looks like they're they're already looking at it, uh, at putting it someplace else until November. I mean, I was looking through the whole thing, and it was, it's pretty, uh, I have a hard time, and, and, and the mayor already knows because I already talked to him. Um, <laughs> with the aesthetics of the park and the tourism. I said, we've had, uh, we had an okay this year, this year, but we've not had a great year. And next year, I'm hoping we can get back into a regular year, but the aesthetics of it. And there is other places that can, it can be put. And it would be, it's not gonna be trailers, of course, but it's, it's modular type home and stuff, but it still has to be aesthetic and it's gonna be there for 10 years. So it's about a place where they can be convenient. I know they need water and sewer because they're not going to put outhouses out. That's a good thing because um, we'd all be really upset then. <laughs> but the, when you walk right in the, in, the, in the locks in that main gate, um, that's, you know, a part of the historical park. And I know that they've worked with SHIFO. I see that they've worked with SHIFO and worked out some things because normally you wouldn't be able to do that. So there's a, uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't have to be right there inside the, the main gate. Um, if there's another place that is better for, you know, is there's a lot of space. The Sioux Locks has a lot of space. It's not as if the space is just, uh, you know, this is the only place that can go. There's other places. And there is businesses that can be rented. It looks like they are going to be are they moving to the third floor of the um, the building until they build it so we can open up the visitor center, which I'm really grateful for because that was not just hard on uh, visitors, but it was hard on the employees that had to be outside all the time. So, but that was COVID that did that. So, and built there. So I'm seeing that um, if they could find not such a such a visual place for it because it is going to be business. If they could find a place that they could put it that uh, would still work. And I, the park is a big park. And uh, visually, I know they said that they put it back after 10 years, but that's 10 years. 10 years of, the, of it sitting right out there on Portage Avenue. You know, you'll be able to see it. So um, I'm just uh, here to support you and whatever you decide, because you are the commission, you're making a decision. And I will be bringing it to my board of directors on Thursday. <laughs> so they will uh, probably, we'll be putting together a letter also. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to be here to support you and to tell you, I mean, I've been looking into it and uh, it's visually, I just, I've been on, I'm on the Visitor Center Association board also. I'm vice president of that board, I've been on it since it started. So it's about, um, we wanna make sure we get half a million visitors next year. We wanna make sure they're pleased when they come and they don't have to see uh, business going on when they first walk in. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. As a positive, you're getting the building back too, right? Yes, that is a positive, yeah. and I'm very happy because we have some new displays that are going to be in there, and uh, so we want to be able to get those displays up. But thank you. Great. 
Yeah, that Sulak's Visitor Center certainly is a uh, key part of the uh, park and uh, tourism. So we appreciate everything that uh, the volunteers do there. So uh, we'll move on to City Commission. Where's my list? Commissioner Talentino's. Any questions? Thank or you. Comments? Yeah, I do, Your Honor. Um, you know, this is not a new issue uh, that the Corps of Engineers has brought up. This has kind of been in the workings for a, a, quite a while. Um, hey, I'm fine with exactly where it's planned on being. I personally don't think anybody is going to go on a Google Earth, see a building, and not come to the Sioux Locks and visit it. Second of all, everything the Corps of Engineers does is going to be looking nice. Have you ever seen a really crappy building on Corps of Engineers site? No, I don't think we have. You know, I think we're thinking way too much into this, and I understand because of the Section 106, they need to have the public comment. That's fine, but I think you know, I don't want to lose sight of a one billion dollar project. Okay, and then let's be let's be straight with this. This isn't going to be the Joe Greasy worker that's running the cat, running a crane. This is going to be for the management team. These guys, let's face it, don't even get dirty. Okay, people are going to want to actually come and see this. Finally, the Sioux Lock is being built. You know, we've been talking about this since the early 80s. It's getting done. Hey, people are going to want to see this, going to want to be a part of this. And then now if we move them down the street or ask them to move down the street, now they're going to be coming in and out of that gate constantly all the time. If the, if the management team and they're in there, they're going to be in there. Now they're going to come down. They're going to go eat lunch. They're going to do things. They're going to go to the store and buy a bag of chips, what have you. I think it's good for everything. The location is fine. You walk in that gate, you usually go right straight ahead. You, most people go down the center through the information center on the, on the middle of the, the lock anyhow. I don't see this being an issue. And listen, let's not lose sight. Let's not step over a dollar to pick up a penny and lose sight of a billion dollar project. I mean, look how much the city of Sault Ste. Marie has already gained itself, our city, in phase one with a $52 million contract. You know, let's not lose sight of what we're getting. So, you know, I, I guess in closing, not that I think this building will be negative, but if we're going to expect to benefit from the positive impacts of what's going to come out of this $1 billion job, we should be ready to deal with some negative impacts that will come along with it as well. I yield. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Twarty. Yeah, thank you. Uh, when I reached out to Brian last week to ask him if he would put this on the agenda, it, it more... I understand that the Corps of Engineers is going to do what the Corps of Engineers is going to do, and uh, but the fact that they are asking for public input, and we are the public body within the city of Sault Ste. Marie, which they live in, I feel that it's our opportunity to at least discuss it. We owe it to our community. We owe it to our business owners to talk it through. And if we decide that we want to set a, send a letter forward, then I think we should do that. I, I do... I am concerned about it. I'm concerned about us losing any trees in the park, and I am concerned about the aesthetics changing in the park. And I can tell you that until 10 years ago, now Jody Bospisrath is gonna understand this a lot longer than me, but until a few years ago, I didn't know what Portage Street really meant to our community, and I didn't know what the Sioux Locks meant to those Portage Street businesses. Jody's dad would disagree because he worked down at the fudge shop for 40 years, but you know, I've only been there for a few years and it is so important. There's such limited parking already. I am concerned about people coming and going and uh, taking up parking for tourism. And, um, and then I'm also concerned about the aesthetics in the park. I mean, the, the, our downtown businesses and our community as a whole really, really depend on that park being used for tourism and being used for the visitors. It was really sad last summer when the visitor center was closed, and we all know that it was closed because of COVID, but the lack of the bathrooms, and we've discussed the bathrooms, right? But there was really nowhere for 400,000 people to use the restroom on those two, three blocks of Portage Street because restaurants were closed, they weren't open, there was no restroom facilities was within uh, the visitor center. So, you know, this park is very, very important to our town. And it's really important to the tourism industry. And I think that it's just our due diligence having a conversation. I think that we should send a letter um, asking for maybe a little bit more clarity, asking if there is another alternative location because we don't want it to impact our tourism industry and we don't want it to impact the businesses. 
Um, but I just think that it's our responsibility as the spokespeople for the city to um, have a conversation and send what our thoughts are. I did have three business owners reach out to me. Uh, one is uh, Bell Enterprises. They are, they were okay. They're not overly concerned. They said it could have been in a worse location. Uh, then I had Brad Blair, who's very concerned about the location because he has a couple of stores down on Portage Street that depend on that tourism. And then one was Carol McClellan. And she has several locations along with her son, Zach, and they're, they're concerned about it. Uh, not, not for the aesthetics. We know that the Corps of Engineers does something, you know, they usually do good things, but just, I mean, over, over the overall flow of the park. So I'm just a little concerned about it. And so I thought we should have that conversation. And then I yield. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, moving on to Commissioner Bospis Rath. Um, yeah, I'm just going to echo Commissioner Twardy. Um, one thing I will say that, you know, I looked at the map, I looked at the building where it would be. I don't know how much thought they put into where that building would go because it is front and center on Portage. You're going to see it. And they say a temporary, but my feeling is 10 years. I mean, that's pretty permanent, especially for people that come and visit the locks. You're going to have 10 years of people coming to visit the locks that might not come back and they're going to remember what they saw. So that's a big concern. And of course, trees, um, those are old trees and you can't put up old trees back. So um, that's a huge concern for me. Also, I have watched the, um, the Facebook comments on their own page and I would say it's, it's pretty split. A lot of the um, residents of Sault Ste. Marie, I, I feel were against it, that said they were residents of the city. Um, to me, I think there's other places they could put that building. They could put it down past the fountain, down closer towards the federal building, if they still want to be within the locks. They're still by the water, they're still going to be by the project. But I just think for those businesses on Portage, for our, our tourism, for our locals, I mean, how many people use the locks in the summertime because it's just a fun place to go. We've got music in the park now. Um, there's just a lot of things. We've got a race going through the park. Um, there's just different things that I think we really need to think about. Yes, it's a huge, you know, $1 billion. We love that they're doing this improvement to the locks. I'm not saying that, but I do think we can't just let them do whatever they want because this is our city. So to me, I think they need to think a little bit harder on where they're gonna place that building. And I am not for where they're placing it. I think they can put it in the back somewhere. They can put it on either side at the end of the locks. Um, so that's just, that's just me, my opinion. I yield. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Collins, any questions or comments? Yeah, I guess my first um, I guess question is, is that I don't read anything in here from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers saying that that's what they want to do, right? They're just looking for input. I mean, they put three alternatives out here that they could possibly use the third floor of the administration building. They could look at leasing offsite space or they could construct a modular. So I, I guess my question is, is do they want to construct a modular? That's what their first option is? Yes. Okay. Yep. So... I guess just a little bit of background. So when I was vice president of development for Greektown Casino, I can tell you that being off-site managing a construction project is very difficult. So I can see where they would want to be on site. I understand Commissioner Torty and Commissioner um, Boss Bothras comments as far as, at, you know, the aesthetics and so forth. But on the other side of it, I want to make sure that we're not making it difficult for them to from a logistic standpoint and managing the project to make sure that it's going for, forward the way that they need it to go forward with. So I guess where I'm at with this is that if that's where they think that it needs to be and that's their best place, um, I would say that that's where I would support that. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> as, a, as a young man, I was fortunate enough to work for some great people in town who were uh, heavy into politics and 
actually got invited to a meeting one time in the, I guess you'd call it the basement or the bomb shelter part of the, of the Sulox where a congressman was here from Georgia. He was the head of the appropriations committee and I know his name escapes me right now, but he said, this project's gonna happen. Within a few months, this project is gonna happen. That was 1986. Now, here we are 2021 with a billion dollar project. Um, hundreds of thousands of people come here to see the locks every year, but everybody has something they like. Some people like the freighters, some people like other things. We're gonna, there's people gonna come here to watch this construction. There's, there's gonna be people here that are really gonna in, enjoy that. I don't see any problem with the, wh where they'd like to put this right now, but maybe they could actually, instead of thinking that we're impeding on tourism, maybe we can include this in tourism. Maybe in front of their offices, they could have some monitors and some screens to show where they are in the construction phase and what's coming up next. Um, you know, just like they have in the, in the Welcome Center when, when they tell you what bolts are coming up, what bolts are coming down. If they put this, they put this uh, dwelling here, if they put this here, they could probably, we could probably include them in some type of, uh, um, uh, of tourism. So if this is what they'd like to do, and like Commissioner Talentino said, they're not going to put up nothing shoddy. It'll be beautiful and it'll look nice. Um, I agree with this. Thank you, Your Honor. I Thank you, Commissioner. All right, um, I just have a, a few comments. I did uh, read through our, our packet and then I looked up the uh, Section 106 uh, National Historic Preservation Act report that they uh, drew up and it has a very, very good and articulate background uh, on the project and the options that we're looking at. As Commissioner Collins said, they looked at three different options. One was the third floor on the building in the middle uh, the other was to lease local space, and the other was uh, to put up a portable building. And uh, they analyzed it based on six different criteria. One was the size, utilities, proximity, timeliness, minimizing the effects of uh, any effects to the Sioux Locks from a historic preservation perspective, and then uh, from a cost perspective. And uh, they did go through many different alternatives, and uh, they ruled them out. Uh, and typically, this is a uh, 5,600 square foot building they're talking about. So it's, it's under a General Services Administration, GSA lease. And I don't know if anybody has uh, had any experience with GSA leasing in federal government, but it is cumbersome and it's expensive and very time consuming. And, and I can understand why they wouldn't want to go that direction or are uh, trying to lean away from that direction because it's, it's almost an impossibility. Um, and uh, that would be for the leasing part and then the third floor renovation of their existing building. And uh, when you talk about the third floor with federal guidelines, they'd have to put an elevator in, they'd have to uh, work out accessibility. And there are also issues with uh, asbestos, lead-based paint and all of the other uh, type of things. So I understand and I see their rationale for not wanting to go with those options. And when they talked about the best option being a location uh, of the portables, they did analyze four different locations. One was right next to the SLVCA. One was in the spot that they're looking at now. One was farther uh, west, which is over by the maintenance building, which was actually their preferred spot in the beginning uh, until they started working out the details. The spot that they're looking at right now actually has the least amount of trees to be removed and the least amount of infrastructure to be changed because all the other spots they'd have to uh, change parking lots, change roadways, and they'd also have to change that big iron wrought iron fence uh, as well. So I, I do uh, think that uh, it was very, very well thought out and very well worked through and uh, if you look at some of the pictures, uh, it's, it's not as intimidating as I thought it may be. I also reached out to Kevin Sprague, who is the area engineer. He assured me that parking would be no different than it is today. It's, uh, they're not expecting to park across the front uh, of the Portage Avenue. He said uh, that certainly is an issue that we'd, they would have to work out and uh, work on remote parking. Uh, and he said that that location actually is preferred for a variety of reasons, but one is its proximity to water and sewer. 
Uh, I didn't realize it, but uh, the Corps of Engineers is not hooked up to our water and sewer on all of the buildings on that campus. They have over 25 septic tanks. <laughs> so, uh, but part of their long range plan is to uh, get all those buildings hooked up to uh, the water and sewer system. And uh, certainly this building, the temporary would be closer to all the utilities for them. Um, one of the other things that he said is that they studied the traffic patterns of tourists and this was the least intrusive location on the entire park because the tourists go in the main gate and straight up towards the buildings, uh, towards the locks, uh, either at the guard shack gate straight forward or at the other one. So he thought it was least uh, intrusive and uh, had the lowest traffic pattern for the tourists. Uh, as far as um, the, the view of it, I agree, and they do address, and that's why they're actually uh, asking for public comment uh, through the Section 106 because of the State Historic Preservation Office, because it does have an adverse effect on the view. Uh, so if you're driving down Portage, you're going to see a building what, rather than seeing straight through to either the other concrete barrier, the building, or the uh, two-floor uh, viewing platform. Um, he, uh, he was uh, very open and said that, uh, you know, if, if we submitted uh, a request saying that um, that is a bad location and not to do it there, he said there certainly, uh, you know, as part of the process, we'll look at it. And, uh, but also said that with that request and any request to any agency, you might not want to just say, I don't like that location, you might want to have an alternative for them because as we all know, if you fight and get a change made, the new location that is chosen or the new alternative that is chosen may be something worse. So I think that I would be uh, perfectly happy in signing a letter or, or uh, helping write a letter that said, uh, I think uh, Tony said it probably the best. We want to make sure that the park is aesthetically and physically pleasing and friendly to tourists. Uh, and, you know, we would prefer option blank the blank if, if um, you know, that met the uh, criteria for them. But I think that if, if this location hits all the bullets and uh, it would create a hardship for them, then I would be a little bit afraid of, of what they uh, might do or where they might go. Um, I think, and I would uh, request that everybody go out and kind of look through this uh, packet. It's, there's a lot of information. There's about 15, 20, 30 pages, but <clears throat> it's all very good information and uh, gave me, uh, I think, a lot more confidence in the background for their, uh, for their uh, request and what they're looking at. I think we'd all rather see it somewhere else or not even see it at all, you know, no pun intended. But uh, I think that uh, they put a, a great deal of uh, consideration into this. And I think keep in mind that this location has the fewest amount of trees to be cut of any location in the park. So two trees. And we all remember uh, a few years ago when some trees started going down in the park. <laughs> it was a very ugly situation. <laughs> so... Uh, but those are my comments. So I don't know if you want to go back around and, and uh, give uh, Brian an idea of what type of uh, correspondence we'd be looking at. Uh, we also, I would mention that we also have a meeting on Thursday with Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians. It's the uh, Sioux St. Marie uh, Sioux Tribe Liaison Committee, and this will probably be a topic. And then on Monday, there will be a uh, Sioux Tribe or a um, Sioux Locks uh, meeting that we have once a month with the uh, core and with the ERA group. So I think that'll be a good opportunity for discussion to flesh out any uh, thoughts on that too. So thank you, uh, Tony Haller for pointing that out. Uh, Commissioner Twardy. Uh Thank you for your uh, well thought out answer. And I think if we can come to an agreement on some sort of letter that we would like to send forward, I would really like to hear what uh, the Chippewa County Tribe of Indians has to say, and if they have any concerns. Uh, I did see that it was only two trees that were coming down, and the reason that I wanted us to have this conversation is just because, I, like I said, I think that that's what this body is supposed to be doing, is having conversations 
about things that are going to impact our community. And I'd like to see us all come to the same level of agreement. I do understand the logistics. I looked at their plan. Um, I didn't understand that the section 106 is really like sort of the SHPO and I couldn't understand how they got this so quickly through SHPO because as you know, we've tried to do things on city hall lawn and <laughs> we just could never get through the red tape. So the fact that they were able to get us through SHPO so quickly, but even if we wanted to make some sort of suggestions to them because a 10 year temporary building isn't quite so temporary Maybe there is something like Commissioner Miller had said, maybe they would be willing to um, put some sort of drawings around the outside of the building or, or just talk about what that structure is there for and really where the progress in the lock is coming along with. My biggest concern really is that I, I just don't want it to detract from the beauty of the park and the usefulness of the park. And you're, you're correct. I watch people's traffic patterns all the time and very rarely do people walk in through a door and go left. It's very unusual. People usually walk straight or they go right and that's because the majority of people are right-handed and the way that we drive on cars. And I, in my stores, I've tried so hard to get people to change their traffic patterns and they're, they're just inherent in us. And so it, with it sitting behind that security guard building it probably won't be seen it's not going to be seen when you're walking into the park the only place you're going to see it is on Portage Street really or then when you're inside the park but if we could make some suggestions uh, come to an agreement and and send some sort of letter forward I, I think that that's the diligence that we should be doing thank you good comments thanks Anybody else have any comments for uh, city manager? Commissioner Bospis Rath. Yeah, I'm wondering, I'm seeing on the um, alternative analysis, location number three, which would be, I don't know if that's, it's far to the east. Um, I think that's the only one where it said the proximity isn't the best, but everything else falls in line. I, I personally like that one because it's away from the main park and you're not really blocking any view. It's, it's more down past the fountain, but again, it is the proximity. So that's the hurdle there. Um, I do like the idea that Commissioner Miller did say about like signs and stuff. That's a great neat idea if they could do something where they, you could see the ships coming up. Um, but personally, I do like location three just because it is out of the way. And if that's the only thing is the proximity on their little checklist, if I'm reading it right, I could be reading it wrong, but um, that's just all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, good comments, thank you. Anybody else? So I think uh, we won't be able to discuss this before the next meeting, but we'll, uh, I'll get, I'll get you to Greg. Uh, but I think we'll have, uh, Brian, uh, draft a letter and we'll pass it around for uh, concurrence uh, before we send it in. And I think we should wait to send it in until we have uh, the two meetings, Thursday uh, with the Sioux Tribe and then Monday at the uh, Sioux Locks. So, Mr. Collins. I just wanted to say that I think you articulated the, the way the letter should be written perfectly. So, um, I just wanted to say that. that Thank you. you know, I mean, as far as if you're going to we draft it. I think that's a good place to start, and then we can edit it as we go. I Thank would you. make a motion that the mayor has to help the city manager write it. <laughs> I'll make a motion that the mayor has to help the city manager write it. <laughs> I'd be glad to. <laughs> I got a lot of red pens on my desk. <laughs> so, just, <laughs> so just just to kind of wrap this conversation up, I mean, there's a lot of concerns um, between all the commissioners. You know, we can kind of generalize some of the concerns. And it's really about the aesthetics and really trying to incorporate it, um, incorporate whatever they do do with the site, wherever they go, to be as tourist friendly as possible. And whether that be interpretive signs to talk about the project or whatever the case may be, I think we've got some, I think I've got some good feedback and as well as with the help from the mayor, I think we'll be able to draft something that kind of captures 
what the commission was talking about tonight. And of course, we'll send it out for review prior to us sending it to the uh, Army Corps. That was almost perfect. I hope you wrote that down. We can watch uh, the, the good thing out. about these. The good thing about these zooms is they're recorded, so I don't have to write right. anything down. Bad thing about these zooms is I clicked out of board docs on ex by accident. But uh, <laughs> all right, any other questions or comments on uh, discussion of uh, Corps of Engineers? I think it was great discussion, and everybody is uh, passionate about the community and uh, certainly our biggest asset, which is Sulox. And that's uh, all. I Thank you to everybody. Thank you for the conversation and thank you for um, taking care of us. So. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, item H is the city manager announcements and updates. And it looks like he's got a, quite a few bullet points there for us. So city manager Chapman. All righty. Uh, first foremost, COVID operational updates. Uh, nothing has changed as far as operational wise since the last meeting. Um, there is some potential movement at the polar. Um, it kind of works on the um, uh, any kind of team practices plans being approved by the health department. Uh, the Eagles are coming back to practice there. They're ensuring isolation with their players and they have approval from the health department. So that'll be happening again. With them coming back, we'll shift the open skate to be a little bit later in the day. Um, as far as the other operations, we are still being impacted by COVID. Uh, for example, the city clerk's office right now is going to be without staff for the week as there's some COVID-related issues going on down there. So our operations are still being impacted by COVID and quarantines. Um, we are focusing on kind of the essentials, especially if the snow comes down. So we'll still be able to meet those mandates. Um, the staff have started to receive vaccinations. The EMS, the firefighters and EMS team, they were vaccinated a couple of weeks ago. The police department started being vaccinated last week. Um, right now it's a voluntary basis. Any employees within those phases that want them, we hook them up with the health department in order to receive them. So uh, some things are changing. Most things are status quo right now. Um, I sent a couple of emails out to the commission regarding the budget schedule and goal setting schedule. Give me your comments back as soon as you can so we can finalize that information. Um, in February, there's a budget kind of 101 informational training session on February 15th. We're also looking at possibly doing another training for the commission um, regarding some best practices and what other cities are kind of focusing on big picture wise to help rejuvenate their communities. Um, also included in the packet today is a secondary item on the water assistance program. Uh, the city has received some funds from the state to help uh, uh, residents, businesses in the rears regarding their past due water bills. Uh, so there's a good financial breakdown in terms of the money that's coming in and the money that's going out. So uh, with that, any questions? Feel free to ask them, but I have nothing else at this time. Any questions for the city manager? Do you know if uh, they're laying uh, water in canes, if that will be rentable soon? Uh, not yet. I don't think we're laying it down yet. Um, we're going to start talking about that, uh, whether or not we do it this year. We're not sure if there'll be enough people to actually kind of make it worth the work, but we're reviewing that right now, but with the warm weather, it's kind of a fuel exercise. Last winter was kind of cold and I had a hard time kind of keeping together. So we're reviewing that right now. Okay. Anybody else? Commissioner Miller. Mr. Chapman, what's going on at the, uh, at the ski hill then? I know, the, I know the weather's warm, but I mean, where were they or how, how far along are they? We are ready as soon as we get some snow. So there's not enough snow on the base right now. If we were to send a handful of people down the hill, uh, you'd start seeing green eventually. So we need about another foot of snow to come down and actually stick around before we can open up that hill. I guess what I'm getting at is it's just all weather contingent right now. Otherwise, we're set to go. Correct, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, any other questions? Moving on into city manager announcements and updates, number two. 
or did you already cover was that your re report yes sir i can go okay. over it again if you want me to Woo moving now unless anybody has any questions on the uh utility assistance program okay moving into item i matters presented by the public is there anybody online that would like to uh discuss a matter with the commission I see uh, Jay Gage is here from Senator Stabenow's office. Thank you very much for tuning in. Your Honor, always a pleasure. Happy to be here in my favorite, uh, I'm going to be biased, favorite city in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and all of Michigan, frankly. <laughs> um, I did just want to add, too, I know that uh, I didn't reserve time to talk uh, during the discussion about the Locks Visitor Center, but I did get a phone call from Linda Hoth as well as uh, former Mayor Anthony G. Bospis, God bless his soul, uh, to talk about the Sulox Park and uh, the Visitor Center. And so I will be reaching out to the Army Corps on behalf of the Senator and just, just letting them know that we've heard some concerns from the community and just, just relaying those concerns and, and uh, you know, relaying that information as well. So I, just thought, I thought I'd add that, but uh, all in all, I appreciated the discussion tonight. It was great to hear uh, the varying perspectives of the commission and, and certainly helps uh, me keep my, my toes on uh, the pulse in Sault Ste. Marie. Well, so we thank you for having me on the, the meeting tonight. We certainly appreciate your uh, work on behalf of the Senator. I know that uh, in my day job, I speak to you quite often and you yeah. do a great job in representing the UP constituents and we're very happy that you're able to uh, declare Sault Ste. Marie a residence. So. Well, I certainly appreciate that, that compliment. You know, like the work is hard. I do have to work with some very difficult people over at the U.S. <laughs> Department of Agriculture uh, at times. And so, you know, the work is challenging, but, it, you know, it, it pays decently. So we get by. Back at you. Anybody else uh, in the audience that would uh, like to discuss anything in front of the commission? Just have to unmute your microphone. All right, seeing none, we'll go to item J, matters presented by the city commission. Commissioners, Commissioner Torty. Well, of course, and I'm gonna steal your thunder. I'm gonna say thank you to Kayla Richardson and to Max Anderson and Scotty Marble for their wonderful New Year's Eve event. Um, I only had a few minutes that I spent with them. They um, reached out to my husband, Steve, and I to see if we would offer up some free hot beverages to the hosts, and we were very happy to do so, and then our business ended up being highlighted, but I, and I know that you went down to the tent and you visited them, Mayor, so you can certainly chime in, but I, it was, it's been fantastic. The amount of support that this city has done all throughout the holiday season from one event to the other, I'm just astounded. And it gets me very emotional because I'm, I'm really just proud to live in this community and the amount of things that we've been able to accomplish during these trying times and making people feel like they can still be connected when they're still just at home and they're practicing state safe distances. And we of course miss everybody, but um, we'll all be back together soon. But it, it was fantastic. Well, uh, thank you very much for those comments. And uh, I wish I could take credit for being down there, but uh, I called uh, Matt Pocket from <laughs> from the uh, warmth of my uh, home. So uh, it was a it was a safe interview, and uh, but they did a great job, and it was it was uh, really fun, and uh, could be the sign of some other things to come. I I think uh, pretty good format. And then I went down at midnight, of course, to watch the ball drop. And uh, that was a nice location. You could see it very clearly. And uh, I don't know who's got that uh, machine, but it's got some really long forks on it. I think it was as long as the uh, ladder truck. So, uh, yeah, and it was well done. So any other commissioners have any uh, comments? Commissioner Miller. I thought the ball drop was fantastic. It was, it was beautiful. Well done. Um, there were a, a few people on the uh, side of the road, but most people stayed in their cars and, uh, and practiced the social distancing. And I just thought it was, it was just beautiful. I thought it was very nice. And uh, one quick comment for, uh, for Jay Gage. <laughs> Jay? Is he gone? Oh, I'm, Commissioner, I'm here. Are you trying to look like GT Long or was that just an accident? 
Listen, my, my mustache is aggressive and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the COVID. My wife uh, hates it. And so if, if she gets lobbied by the right city commissioner, I just might have to shave this thing off. So, Thanks, GT. You got her. <laughs> Maybe we should put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Does Jay shave it or not? I believe they call that mission creep, Your Honor. <laughs> Uh, any other commissioner have any comments? Seeing none, uh, Commissioner Twardy. Move to adjourn our first meeting of 2021. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Great meeting of 2021. <laughs>